Hi, I'm Jeff. Have you ever wondered how to take two boards and make them into a wider panel? Well, in this video, I'm going to show you how to do that using a technique known as a sprung a long grain to long grain joint. We're going to do what's known as a sprung long grain to long grain joint. And the way it works is that we prepare these two inside faces, sorry, inside edges, if you've watched my previous video on how to prepare boards. And we prepare them in such a way that there is a small hollow in the middle, which we can then glue together. If we do this right, this joint is very, very strong because the strength of modern glues is such that Instead of the glue line breaking, the wood around it will break first. Before we get started, let's just quickly have a chat about the joint. You can use this joint to make any sort of panel, be it a tabletop, panels for the side of a cabinet, or even draw bottoms. And you need to consider not only the grain direction, but also the look of the finished product. So for example, if you look at these two boards, I think you'll see that when they come together, the glue line will probably be hidden by the grain pattern on the surface. And that's what I prefer. The problem in this case is that from a cleaning up perspective, the grain on this board is going this way, by the looks of it. For the most part, it's going that way. And on this board, it's coming the other way. And what that means when I'm doing, when I'm preparing it, is that one of the boards I'll be planning in the wrong direction. So I just need to take smaller cuts and just take a little bit more time. If I turned it around the other way so that the, the grain Direction is the same. I'm not quite so sure that we're going to hide it because the pattern and the timber is different. So I think I would prefer that it looks like this, so that when I do the joint, join line will disappear. We'll use the principles that I showed you in my last video on how to prepare timber for fine woodworking in order to make this spring joint. Let me show you what I mean. So on these two boards, the idea is that I will be joining them down the middle. And as you can probably see, there is a big gap in there at the moment. It touches at both ends, but in the middle, there's a big gap. And that's essentially the essence of a spring joint except in this case it's too big. And what happens is, when we put clamps on the, on the middle, it pulls it together into a very strong joint. So what we have to do is we put our boards in the vise and then working them together, we just put a small hollow in it. In this case, we're gonna take some of the hollow out and flatten it first and then we'll put it back in again. But I'll show you what I mean. Let's get started. So I'm gonna pop these two in my vise, clamp the ends together just to make it a little bit easier because they're long boards and I've only got a small vise. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn it upside down and put the boards flat so that the surface that I'm planing is at the same level and then I'll put it in my glass. And then from here, I just use my hand plane in the same way that I did in my last video to join an edge here with a small hollow. And the reason I'm doing the two together is that because they're only about 10mm thick, 
it's very easy for me to twist the, the plane. Whereas if I hold it on the boards like this, it's much easier to keep them in flat or keep it flat. And then when I pull these out and bring them together, any angle that I've got along here will, even, will cancel itself out. So let's get started on it. Now I've only got a very fine shaving set. Now you can hear a few bumps I've got to get out because the plane is not cutting. Now, I'm just listening to the sound of the plane. But another alternative to knowing when I've got all the bumps and that out of it is to get a pencil and describe and draw lines down the middle of the wall. And what that will do is once I take each shaving off, I get more we get rid of more and more of the pencil marks and when they're all gone it means I've touched every piece of that edge. Okay, now that's got that sorted. And what I did forget to grab before I started was my long rule. Just to help me see how close we are. I think we're probably just going to need to knock a little bit off the end. We can now just finish the hollowing because that's got rid of the worst of it. And one more and I think that should be it. Pop it out of the clamp. We just pop it out of the vise, and then take the clamps off as well. And open it up. Let's see what we got. Okay, over the length of it, I think we're still a little bit too deep in the middle. So that's okay, we'll just do a little bit more. And based off what I saw, it looks like I didn't take enough off here and here. And when I was taking some ends off earlier, I took too much out.
two off each end, I think that should be it, and then just re it. Maybe just use the depth of cut just a fraction. Maybe not quite that far. Try that one again. That's better. There's still a gap there, but nowhere near as big as it was. And as I pull it together by hand, the seam has almost disappeared already, so that's a good sign. Now what we'll do is we'll just uh, start doing some glue ups. Glue up for this is pretty straightforward. What I have here is some gluing supports that I made a while ago, and I actually made them to help me glue up a tabletop. And the idea was that the boards sat lengthways, so lengthways along my bench like that, and the boards sat across it so that I could get clamps underneath and over the top to glue it up. Recently realised that if I put it the other way like this, I can use it to support my smaller clamps for doing glue ups of small panels like this where the length of the bars and their weight would cause them the panels to deflect and not be flat anymore. So it's a bit of a win-win for me. Now, from a glut perspective, what we're going to do, simply just going to fold it in half the same way that we planed it, get some glue and a glue roller, and rub some glue on here, use the roller to roll it out and then we'll glue it up. The only thing I don't like about this bottle is the way that the the cap, if you let it slip, it wants to fly down and get in the way and get dirty. Now this little roll is just a small rubber roller that I picked up a few years ago at, I think it was Bunnings. Works very well for what I want to do. Because it doesn't soak up the glue like a foam roller would. It just does a nice job. That's not to say you couldn't use a foam roller, I just think you'd go through more glue if you did. Alright, so then what we do is we just open them back up again, bring them together, clean up the middle one first, so that the, the gap in the middle disappears. Do it right, and I probably haven't got, I've got enough glue on it. There will be a small amount of squeeze out along its length. We'll grab a rule. Ramp rag first just to wipe off a few areas so we can just quickly check it. Make sure it's still flat. Because you know, with boards like this, when you glue them up this way, of any board really, put too much clamping pressure on and it wants to pull the edges up or pull the middle up away from the flat bit at the bottom.
I've also got some waxed paper, which I'll just put on the ends here. And what that'll do is it'll just stop like the little clamp from sticking the glue line. The reason the clamps on the end is just to make sure that the end pieces are in the right alignment. Excess glue underneath. Right, and I've got two more clamps to go on. And these will just help to finish off pulling the joint together. I always try to use a under and over arrangement because I think it will help cancel out any tendency for the clamps to pull the edges one way or the other as in up or down because I think if you if the bottom ones want to pull it so that the the middle comes up these ones are going to want to pull it so that it goes down and then hold it squared along the side I should say flat along the side All right, well that's pretty much it for now. I'm going to leave this in clamps overnight. In the morning we'll come out and take the clamps off and see how it looks. But at the moment, what I can see is that that glue line is mostly disappearing. So it looks almost like it's one whole board. Now obviously the grain direction will make it will show that it's not, but doing it in this way helps us to get rid of some of that clashing graying patterns. The board's been left to glue up overnight. Let's take it out of the clamps and see what happens. Okay, so we've got a very tight glue joint. I can see it at this end because it feels like I don't didn't quite have my boards the same thickness, but that's okay, we can clean that up. And because of the grain pattern, the glue joint should disappear. For the most part, you can't actually see the glue joint itself because it's hidden by the the grain pattern in the wood. I'm very happy with that. <laughs> that sometimes happens when you put on a little bit of glue, running through this through a sander will clean that up quite nicely. And as I said, the glue line has pretty much disappeared, and that was exactly what I'm looking for. So you can see it's not all that hard to produce very fine, high quality joints like this. Because of the strength of modern glues, that will be a stronger joint than the wood itself around it. So if we put it under a lot of pressure, it will break somewhere in here, not along the glue line. Well, I hope you found that interesting. If you did, consider giving us a like 
and if you didn't, a dislike. Either way, please leave us a comment. If you have any other comments or topic suggestions, please leave a comment below as well. I invite you to subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications so you stay up to date with my videos. Thank you for watching.